Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I want to talk about today is the huge controversy coming out of Baltimore. And the whole controversy revolves around Baltimore police officer Richard Pinero and what he did on camera. On January 24th, there was a drug bust that resulted in the arrest of 27-year-old Tyrone Jones. Police said there was a drug sale, they found heroin in gel capsule form, and there was even video evidence. I'm gonna go check here. Hold on. Officer Benjero heads down the alley. He starts looking through the area to see if he can find anything. He moves a few things around and boom, he found the drugs. Yo. Hold up. And so the video evidence seems pretty open and shut. He heads down the alley, he looks through, he finds drugs, boom. The problem is that's not the whole video. It turns out that his body camera is an always on body camera. By the time a police officer is going to activate their body camera, they've most likely been engaged in something. So the camera is always recording and deleting footage until it's activated, and then it holds on to 30 seconds of footage without audio before activation. And what the public saw in those 30 seconds without sound caused a lot of outrage. We see the police officer with the drugs already in his hand hand. He then puts it on the ground, covers it up. The other two officers are there with him. They proceed to walk out of the alley, he turns around, and boom, then he activates the body camera. I'm gonna go check here. Hold on. So now maybe you understand where all of this outrage is coming from. Many saying it looks like the police officer here got caught planting evidence. Now since the release of the video, the charges against Jones have been dropped. Officer Pinheiro has been suspended, and the other two officers have been placed on administrative duty. Baltimore Police Commissioner Kevin Davis saying the Internal Affairs Unit is investigating. The state's attorney office saying in a statement, our office immediately implemented established protocols to not only refer this matter to the Internal Affairs Division of the Baltimore Police Department, but began identifying active cases involving these officers. So this may have a much wider impact since the officer in question here reportedly is a witness in 53 other open cases. And according to the public defender, even with the knowledge of this video being out there, the officer was recently used as a witness by a prosecutor. Now after a lot of this initial reaction, the police department has released more videos. There is an argument that there's a possibility that the police officer did actually find the drugs normally but had chosen to recreate the find for the camera. The footage they released shows the officer actually looking through the area, unable to find anything for a while. There appears to be a part where in a different place he may have found something, but then it immediately cuts to where the officer already has the baggie in his hand. And so what we're dealing with here is a legal, or at the very least, a perception problem. The new footage the police department has released really doesn't show anything. It shows the police officers were looking for the drugs for a while, and then, oh no, we found the drugs, but we forgot the cameras were off, so then we had to recreate the scene. Which, if they don't have to note that on police reports, or if that's legal, that's insane to me. It seems like if they found it legitimately, as soon as they found the drugs, boom, tap the body camera. It gives you 30 seconds of footage from before you hit it. And part of the reason I'm personally not sold on the recreation idea is, is just the verbal callouts in the recreation video. I'm gonna look down here. Oh, hey! For me, that makes it seem like less of a recreation and more of a fake. And so understandably, there's an argument from the other side saying this footage may just show us that they weren't able to find drugs, and so then they decided to plant the drugs. So obviously with the suspension, the investigation, the dropping of Jones's charges, we have a legal issue. But really, no matter the outcome of this investigation, investigation, perception-wise, the Baltimore Police Department, there's there's damage there. There's already so much distrust of the Baltimore Police Department, and this does not help. But I do want to pass the question off to you. Do you think the officer is fine here? This is being blown out of proportion? Or no, you think this is the Baltimore Police Department getting caught planting evidence? Or is it more of just a sketchy situation you don't know how to feel? I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today, and today in awesome brought to you by LootCrate.com slash Phil. Loot Crate, of course, a fantastic theme, mystery, subscription box filled with geek, gamer, pop culture, collectibles, apparel, and gear. Delivered to your door for under $20, and this month's theme is Kingdom. This month we're looking at Lord of the Rings, Legend of Zelda, and Adventure Time. So if you want cool stuff, you also want to support the show, go to lootcrate.com slash phil and use coupon code phil for 10% off your purchase. And the first bit of awesome is that red band trailer for Kingsman the Golden Circle. And for those of you that still play Pokemon Go or have been looking for a reason to get back into the craze, Pokemon Go has announced that they are finally going to have legendary Pokemon in the game, and you'll be able to get them via the raids they are finally launching. Then we got a brand new episode of Hot One with a fantastic Cara Delevingne. Then we got a fantastic video from Ursinarium where it's Star Wars, but the lightsabers sound like Owen Wilson saying wow. Wow, 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 wow. That may be my favorite thing today. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret links of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about a Florida college student by the name of Nick Lutz. Nick was recently in the news for a few reasons. Back in February, Nick found under his windshield wiper a four-page apology from 
from his ex-girlfriend. And Nick was unimpressed with the apology, so he grabbed a red pen and decided to grade it like a paper. In the four-page post, he corrects grammar, leaves commentary, questions, and gives her a final grade. And ultimately, he gave her a D- minus with a revision for half-credit opportunity. Writing long intro, short conclusion, strong hypothesis, but nothing to back it up. Details are important. If you want to be believed, back it up with proof. You claim that cheating never occurred, but then place blame on yourself. Then what for? Need to stop contradicting your own story and pick a side. While the gesture is appreciated, I would prefer details over statements. So this post went viral, it was picked up by media outlets, he was later interviewed. And that was pretty much it for Nick until five months later, the University of Central Florida, where he was a returning senior, they decided to suspend him over the tweet. Initially, the university said that he may have violated the law, but later determined he had violated the student code of conduct. This because he was being, quote, disruptive and harmful. And so Nick was suspended from summer and fall semesters. He was given a mentor. He was put on probation. They also required him to create a presentation that, quote, shows how his actions in this incident have impacted others, along with a five-page paper on the impact of this type of behavior for the future. But rather than just taking this, Nick gets a lawyer and appeals the decision. And he even publicly published part of his appeal with the caption, it has caused much stress for my family and myself. This also violates my First Amendment right to freedom of expression, no matter who agrees or disagrees with it. According to his lawyer, the girlfriend felt like she was being cyberbullied. She went to the sheriff's office, but no files were charged. After which, she went to UCF, where she is not a student, and filed a complaint. The lawyer arguing that what Nick is going through right now is irregular in fairness, pointing out that Nick did not violate local, state, or federal law, arguing Nick has freedom of speech, and he did not violate the student code of conduct. Even quoting part of the UCF code of conduct, the right of all students to seek knowledge, debate ideas, form opinions, and freely express their ideas is fully recognized by the University of Central Florida. The rules of conduct apply to student conduct and will not be used to impose discipline for the lawful expression of ideas. And arguing that nothing Nick said was untrue. He doesn't include derogatory or threatening statements. And he doesn't release any identifying information on who the woman in question is. The only moment you see an identifier is where it says Elizabeth. That could be anybody. So then the appeal part of the story blew up. Outlets started contacting UCF. And the next thing we knew is UCF dropped Nick's suspension. And the associate vice principal and student dean's office released a letter reading. The reported victim, a high school student with plans to attend UCF in the future, experienced substantial emotional distress that undermined her ability to work, study, or participate in regular activities. However, I cannot conclude that her distress is due to your original posting, rather than the subsequent attention your posting drew. And of course, the most important part, it appears that the conduct charge on disruptive behavior was improvidently levied. And the main point here is Nick is free! Now, as far as my opinion, is Nick kind of a dick for doing this? Yes. But in a lovable, that's really fucking funny way. Do I think the university's initial punishment was too extreme? Yes. The fact that legally in the real world, nothing could be done, so the school stepped in and was like, we'll make him pay. It really was just another example to me that many universities are snowflake factories these days. And finally, I think Nick made the right decision not to get back with this girl, mainly because of this line from the letter that reads, I never cheated on you. I promise that on everything. All of me, my mom, my Jeep. <laughs> Literally everything. The fact that this human being that wants to get back with you is like, oh, how do I prove to him I didn't do something? I promise on me. I promise on my mom. I promise on my Jeep. Although in her defense, Jeep is the most awarded SUV class ever. And then let's talk about John McCain in the news because it turns out he has brain cancer. At a recent appointment with his doctor, McCain said he was feeling foggy, not quite as sharp. Also reporting he occasionally had double vision. The doctor runs some CT and MRI scans and they find McCain has primary glioblastoma. And glioblastoma is an aggressive brain cancer. There are about 12,000 new cases a year. It often happens in people over the age of 55. Of the people that are diagnosed, only 4% live past five years. And the average lifespan there is between 12 and 14 months with an almost 100% fatality rate. Now, McCain did have surgery for this. They removed the tumor. Doctors saying they removed 100% of it, but they also did say recurrence is inevitable. It's considered to always come back after 32 months. Now, doctors are saying that McCain is recovering amazingly well. Reportedly, he has suffered almost no ill effects from the surgery. He's planning on returning to the Senate as soon as possible, but he has to stay home right now on doctor's orders. And there's been a general outpouring of support. President Trump tweeting, Melania and I send our thoughts and prayers to Senator McCain, Cindy, and their entire family. Get well soon. President Obama tweeting, John McCain is an American hero and one of the bravest fighters I've ever known. Cancer doesn't know what it's up against, give it hell, John. And while there were get well wishes from both sides, often tragedy brings people together. There was also hate from the left and right. You had examples on the left like Caitlin Johnstone. Caitlin put out an article on Monday titled, Please Just Fucking Die Already. Where it opens, somewhere between 210,000 and 440,000 patients die every year as a result of medical errors. If there was a god, murderous, warmongering, neocon, John McCain would have been one of them. Later writing, if you're waiting for the part where I say I'm just kidding and would never wish death upon anybody, please allow me to make myself clear. I sincerely, genuinely hope 
hope that Arizona Senator John McCain's heart stops beating and that he is subsequently declared dead by qualified medical professionals very soon. And today, after all of this brain cancer news came out, she wrote a new post titled, Good. On the right, we had fuckface extraordinaire Richard Spencer, meaning John McCain is a detestable man. Better he were never born at all. We can all take some pleasure in the thought of him dying painfully. Now to both of those garbage people, I would like to tell them to kindly go fuck themselves. And I share these two because it's important to remember that there are garbage people on both the left and the right. The fact that these people cheer on brain cancer. For a man who fought for his country and was in a Vietnamese prison camp for five and a half years, being starved and tortured, I just have to say, how fucking dare you? That said, it's not surprising that there are reactions like this, but I feel it important to shine a light on this filth. And while I may personally disagree with John McCain on this topic or that topic, I may not like the way that he's handled certain things, there is no doubt in my mind John McCain loves this country and would do anything for this country. I'm reminded of this moment when John McCain was running against Barack Obama to be the president. And it was in McCain's best interest to stir up any fear whatsoever against Obama. But he'd still get stuff like this. We're scared of an Obama presidency. First of all, I want to be president of the United States, and obviously I do not want Senator Obama to be. But I have to tell you, I have to tell you, he is a decent person and a person that you do not have to be scared as president of the United States. Now, I, I just, now I just, now, now look, I, I, if I didn't think I wouldn't be one heck of a lot better president, I wouldn't be running, okay? And that's the point. That's, that's the point. I can't trust Obama. I, I have read about him, and he's not, he's not, he's a, um, he's an Arab. He is not. No? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma he's a, he's a, he's a decent family man, citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with on, on fundamental issues, and that's what this campaign is all about. He's not. Thank you. And while John McCain is not my guy, he is a thousand times the human being of anyone that would cheer on his death. And also on the note of death, I wanted to briefly mention Chester Bennington. Bennington, of course, the lead singer of Linkin Park, and he is in the news today because he has died at the age of 41. His body was found nine o'clock local time in a private home. And reportedly, the coroner said Bennington apparently hanged himself. And with his death, Bennington leaves a wife and six children from two marriages. There's a lot of shock and sadness around this. He reportedly had struggle with alcohol and drug abuse for years. In the past, he's talked about considering suicide. This because he said when he was a child, he was abused by an older male. Also, today would have been Chris Cornell's birthday. Bennington was very close with him. And Cornell committed suicide by hanging back in May. I mention this story because it is yet another sad example of you never know what people are going through. You never really know what's happening up here. You can have what seems to be the best life on the outside, and it is a nightmare on the inside. And so I say to you out there, even if it's not something that you're feeling today, maybe it's something you feel tomorrow. If that depression hits, and those that have it know that it's not like a dark cloud on your day. It's more like a thousand pound wet blanket that is both suffocating and crushing you at the same time. Please seek out professional help. It does not make you weak. Getting out of your own head, getting out of your own way and seeking professional help, that is a sign of strength. And so if there's anything we can get from this story, it's it's awareness and change. And that's actually where I'm going to end today's show. But remember, if you like this video, you like what I do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you missed yesterday's Philip DeFranco show, you can click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to see the newest behind the scenes vlog. Click or tap right there to watch that. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.